so today um, we are going, I'm going to kind of be walking you through this piece of paper that is in your baggie. So if you guys could go and grab your fraction strip piece of paper from the baggie, um, I'm going to kind of teach you guys how to use this. I got a couple emails um, asking what this means, how is this helpful, so that's what I'm going to be talking with you today. So if you guys could grab this piece of paper from the baggie, and then just grab any other piece of paper, it doesn't have to be blank, I grabbed the just in case sheet, um, and I'm just going to use the back side of it. So grab your fraction sheet and a blank sheet of paper, and we will get started. Alright, so I set up this like on my dresser in my room. I set up this like makeshift tripod, so this is what we're gonna, that's what we're gonna work with today. So hopefully this balances all right. All right, it stopped the video. For some reason I might've stopped it, but we're gonna just be working with this. Um, it's kind of like zoomed in, but it'll work. All right. So this is our fraction squares, I mean our fraction strips. Um, this is one of the most helpful tools that you will have when working with fractions, in my opinion. Um, it, it's just an awesome visual representation of the value of each fractions and things like that. So what we're going to start with is kind of... Fractions is a lot of visualization, so you have to kind of picture things in order to understand what fractions are at the beginning, okay? So first I want to talk about the different parts of a fraction. You know that the parts of the fraction, um, let's see if I have a pen up here, I do, nice. If I have a fraction of one third, I know there are two numbers. I have this top number is the numerator. And the bottom number is the denominator. I'm going to be um, using those terms a lot during this lesson. So if, um, make sure that you kind of understand the numerator and the de denominator. The first thing I want to talk about is the denominator. So a big misconception, meaning things that kiddos kind of get confused on, is the denominator when comparing fractions. When the denominator is bigger, is greater, the piece is smaller. So for example, look at this fraction. The fraction 1 half, that whole piece is a lot bigger than 1 twelfth. And think about it this way. If you had a cookie or a cake or anything, would you rather split it with two people or have to share it with 12? Well, if it's one of your favorite desserts, you'll want to share it with two people so that you get a bigger piece. Okay, so the smaller the denominator, the smaller the number on bottom, the bigger the piece. So one half will be bigger will be greater than one third. So when comparing fractions, and I see this sheet, now my brain naturally will say, oh, three is greater. So I know one third is greater. Well, not in fractions, because it's talking about pieces of a whole. One third, I'd rather have half of the cookie than have to share it with three people. So one half, is greater than one third. And I can kind of see that on my fraction strips as well. If I take my blank sheet of paper and I put it on the one half line, so you can see this, this line right here represents one half. If I put it on that line, I know that all of the fractions that I can see are less than one half because I covered up everything greater than one half. So everything smaller than one half includes one third. So I know one third is less than one half, or one half is greater than one third. I know my pieces are bigger when the denominator is smaller, okay? Now what I want you to picture these strips 
as kind of like a road. Imagine your house was here and school was over here, okay? If you're halfway to school from your house, you would be here. If this is your house and this is school and you're one third of the way there, you would be here. If this is your house and this is school and you are three fourths of the way to school, you would be here, almost to school. So imagine this kind of being the beginning and this being the end. I know that if I am three fifths on my way to school, I am more than halfway because I see this line here is more than halfway. This is the start line, this is the finish line. Three fifths is farther along than one half. So I can use this strip to compare fractions. I can put my finger on two sevenths here and see two sevenths is less than four sixths because it is closer to the start line and the pieces are smaller than this whole piece together, okay? Think about it this way. If you, me, and Mr. H were sharing a pizza, it would be cut into thirds. You, me, Mr. H. We each have one third that we're going to eat because these are equal pieces, okay? If you eat your piece and I eat my piece, Mr. H eats his piece. They're equal parts because they're thirds. Now, if Mr. H wasn't hungry and you ate your piece and his piece, you would be eating two thirds, right? You would be eating two of the thirds, which is really this much, two thirds which is greater, which is more than even half the pizza, okay? So you can really compare any of these fractions. I see five ninths, five ninths, so up to this line, is greater than three eighths, which is over here. I know five ninths is greater than two sixths. I know five ninths is greater than six twelfths. Because when I take my piece of paper, I can line it up at that line. And if I can see the fraction, I know it's less than it, okay? If I can't see the fraction, for example, where is eight elevenths? Well, eight elevenths is all the way over here, so I have to move my paper so I know it's greater. Eight elevenths is greater than five ninths, okay? Another thing that I wanted to kind of talk about is how we say fractions, okay? So like I said, we have two parts of a fraction. We have a numerator and a denominator. The numerator, when you say the numerator, you say it just like how you count. One, two, three, four, five, six, and so on. When you say the denominator, that's when you say half, third, fourth, fifth, Kind of like you would say the date. So for example, you would say today is April 23rd, okay? So if there was 23 in the denominator, you would say 20 thirds, okay? So when I read this fraction, I read one, just like how I count, and the denominator is a third. Here, I would read three sevenths, five eighths, eight tenths, three elevenths, seven twelfths. So the numerator, I just say the number, and then the denominator is when I have to say the funky word, like twelfths or halves or thirds or sixths, something like that. All right, so I kind of wanted to just chat with you guys on how to read these fraction bars because we are going to be comparing them in the next couple of days. Okay, so you should know, okay, if I'm comparing, if I ask you to fill in the blank, okay, so to fill in the blank of two sevenths 
and four eighths. I should put my piece of paper on the two sevenths so it's lined up with the line right here so you can see it right here. And then I wanna find four eighths. Okay, I found eighths here. I can see, oh, four eighths is all the way over here. Two sevenths is less than four eighths. Okay, because I see two sevenths and four eighths over here. I see this piece is smaller than all those pieces combined. Okay, another thing. If I ask you for two sevenths, I'm not just looking at these, I'm looking at two of these, two sevenths. So that includes all of this, okay? Just like how four eighths, even though the eighth piece is smaller, it includes four eighths is all of these pieces, okay? Um, let's do another one. Let's compare three sixths and five tenths. Here, I'm gonna put my piece of paper on three sixths. Okay, so I'm working down here now. Three sixths, and I'm gonna go over to five tenths. Oh, I see that three sixths and five tenths are the same. That means that they're equivalent, they are equal. I know that they're equal because if I have three sixths and five tenths, I know three is half of six, so that's three is half a six, and I know five is half a 10. Whenever the numerator is half of the denominator, it's going to be equivalent to one half. So for example, two fourths, the numerator is half of the denominator. And let's do one more, six twelfths. The numerator is half of the denominator, so it's equal to one half. Okay, I know that's a little confusing, so if you don't understand, we'll review it, but equivalent fractions are ones that are equal. So I also can see here, if I put my paper at one third, I see that's also equivalent to three ninths. Okay, I see that these are equivalent fractions because the lines are at the same spot, which is also equivalent to two sixths and four twelfths. We'll talk more about equivalent fractions as um, time goes on, but I just kind of wanted to touch the surface on that. But that is how you use these fraction strips to kind of comp to compare fractions, okay? You find where the fraction is and you compare it. One fifth is less than four sevenths. Three eighths is greater than two sevenths because it's farther along towards the finish line, okay? Imagine this side is the finish line, this line is the start line. Whichever one is closer is greater. All right, that is all I have for you today. I hope that helped a little bit. Um, at, like I said, we'll kind of continue to um, compare fractions, but I just wanted to show you guys this resource because throughout the rest of the lessons this week, I will be referencing that. So I wanna make sure that you guys are able to use it and kind of understanding. And when I re reference the fraction strip sheet, this is what I'm doing. All right, so thank you for watching. Um, let me know if you guys have questions, but um, tomorrow we are going to have a lesson on comparing more fractions and I'm gonna give you some questions to answer. So be looking for those. But in the meantime, have a happy, happy, what day is it? Thursday. <laughs> Bye guys.